Okay. Hello, my name is Nathan Ramirez. I'm going to be the first affirmative um, speaker up, and my partner is David Young, who's the second affirmative. Uh, we'll be speaking today on uh, college athletes should be provided monetary compensation for, pro, um, for participating in school sports competition. Now, the NCAA um, has been exploiting college athletes by using them as free labor, um, free labor, excuse me, while lining their pockets and the accounts of the colleges these students play for. Um, these students are risking their health and futures for a college that does not fairly compensate them. In the United States, it is an injustice not to pay your workers, and the NCAA has been getting away with it for too long. So, uh, the problem that arises from no policy change is things have changed since probably like the 50s, 60s, 70s. I mean, there's big money in the college sports, especially when you see a lot of media deals, ticket sales, fan gear, and the college athlete, they don't get any of that, especially now with a lot more um, health risks and issues coming about of sports, and that's all sports, <coughs> soccer, football, um, hockey, um, everything is represented in college athlete and options for them. Um, if some kind of monetary compensation for college athletes is not implemented, you may start seeing more college athletes trying to unionize and fight for monetary compensations and benefits, which would start turning um, college athletes, I mean, turning a lot of people off to college sports, which people are actually feel like it's overtaking pro sports because it's more pure, there's a lot more options, it's a funner game. Um, in 2012, actually, Northwestern University went up to um, speak in front of the NLRB, which is the National Labor um, Association, and fought for being unionized. They didn't ask for monetary compensation, but they um, fought for more benefits, such as medical and um, larger stipends for their scholarships. And it was heard, and um, they were found as they are right, they are workers, because when they sign their scholarships, they're actually being signed on to play football for that scholarship, and they must have keep that. So it's not for the education, they're there to play sports. <clears throat> also, if players were to persuade the court system, they are employees of the school, as Northwestern was able to at that first um, lawsuit, um, the employees and labor laws as a template of college may end up paying more to players in cash and benefits than they would if they were just proactive and set up a payment system themselves. So they may go up to a courts and they may be seen as these billion dollar media deals that are being offered and signed by Pac-10, the Big 12, the SEC. They have their own network such as Texas Longhorns has their own Longhorn network. 12 years, um, 3.8 million, um, billion dollars are being signed for these conferences that are being dispersed amongst. And the college players aren't getting any of it. Um, so I see it's a major injustice that the NCAA is not providing any kind of monetary or monetary um, funds for the players. I mean, when you look at just the coaching staffs alone, um, the top five or the top ten highest paid college football coaches make up fifty three million seven hundred and forty seven. Um, million dollars a year. That's just for their salary, one year of salary. You got coaches like um, Nick Saban making, with bonus, $7 million, uh, $7 million. Jim Harbaugh from Michigan, $7 million. Ohio State, Urban Meyer, $5 million, These are just the top three coaches and no money goes to the players. And they're the product, they're the commodity that are being used and exploited to gain these big contracts to make the coaches look good, to make the colleges look good. Um, also basketball, Mike um, Krzyzewski from Duke, he makes seven million dollars. That's no bonus, that's just the salary a year. John Calipari, six million five hundred thousand. They're being paid big money because their sports bring in big money for the school. <clears throat> Also, according to the ESPN Sports News, the Pac-12 in 2012 had agreed to a media deal with ESPN and Fox so they could stream their games worth $2.7 billion over 12 years. The, that average is out to $225 million annually. That's, there's only 12 um, teams within the conference, or schools I should say, so if you were to just split that up, you can see what that would be worth. Um, 
Also, there is no NCA requirement for schools to pay for post-college injuries at this time. So they're basically playing and there's, um, they're, it's up to the school to actually implement some kind of health benefits. Now, PAC-12 is one that's been proactive. Um, they provide direct medical expenses for at least four years after the college athlete graduates or until they turn 26, whichever one is first, and that's based on the Affordable Care Act. Um, but they have no lifetime kind of workings comp. So players getting concussions, ACL injuries, long-term injuries that may affect them more when they're in their 40s, 50s, 60s. They won't have any kind of fundage to the college which they probably brought in millions for. Um, also, each conference receives 300000 for each of its schools when the school's football team gets or participates in any NCAA postseason um, sporting events, such as uh, March Madness or uh, a bowl game like Rose Bowl or whatnot. Um, each of the 10 conferences will also receive a base amount for conferences that have contracts for their champions to participate in the major bowls, such as the Orange Bowl, Rose Bowl, Sugar Bowl. Um, the base combined with full academic performance pool will be approximately 51 million for each conference. So that's just to get one team there, they'll be paid 51 million. The SEC has been putting in three or four at a time. I mean, that's $200 million for that conference to be split. Um, a conference also will receive six million for each team that is selected for a semifinal games. Now, this is more towards the new playoff system <clears throat> where they have a semifinal, then a final, then a championship game. Uh, a conference will receive four million for each team that plays in a non-playoff bowl under the arrangement in 2014-15, Cotton Fiesta, and Peach Bowl. Those are those non-championship games. So a specific policy we feel like could be implemented to fix that. Um, I'm proposing that uh, paying college athletes and a revenue sharing system amongst um, the conference teams or even the conferences be set up. Sort of like baseball where um, baseball puts um, teams put in 31% of their revenue and then it's split evenly amongst the teams and if you guys know anything about baseball I mean even the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Detroit Tigers who are in low-income areas are a lot more competitive now and are able to play with the uh, top teams um, also set up lifetime medical benefits for sports related injuries such as working as comp so an employee gets hurt at work hurts his back at the job on the job and yet he can have a working as comp lifetime um, benefit to assist him throughout his later years. Uh, also to keep the competitive balance, the schools and the conference would have a salary cap so the big conferences could not um, just bully everyone around.